attention of social media, some even calling for a boycott of the embattled retailer for paying retention bonuses for executives, all the while not offering severance to employees. Let's uh, go from the 54 the, who have been let go from the 54 stores uh, that they're closing down. For a closer look at this is Natasha Kaufman, president and founder of NKPR. Good to be with you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Let's um, first understand a little bit more about what, what's been going on. They fired about 29 employees. They're closing the stores, liquidating them, paying the executives bonuses, but not paying the employees pension funds that, that, uh, that they maybe they've been entitled to and working towards for over 20 years. Well, and the problem is, is your employees are your biggest ambassadors. They're the people that are at the front of the line. And I think that's part of the problem, right? Customer service is key. So if you're treating employ the employees poorly, that comes across, and I think that um, that's why there's this huge boycott in social media. Social media creates a mob-type mentality, mm -hmm. and so when there's positive news, it thrives, but when there's negative news, people really tend to stick together, and I think um, Sears did not expect that. Do you think that they were even thinking about it? I'm sure they weren't. I think part of the issue that's happening with Sears is they're not thinking strategically. They're so tactical in everything that they're doing that they're not actually thinking strategically about their business. And the left hand isn't necessarily communicating with the right hand because they continue to still have their pop-up store. I believe they're giving away free ice cream this weekend, mm -hmm. yet they just let go of 2,900 employees. Probably not the best strategic approach. How common do you think that actually is? I, I think it's... You know what, less and less common now because social media is such a huge part of our overall marketing strategy. Um, I just don't think it was a consideration for Sears. If you look at their Instagram, Sears Canada just started their Instagram about a year ago. They have 10,000 followers. I have more followers than they do and I don't own you know 200 mm -hmm. stores across the country, right? So I just think that um, it's, it wasn't a consideration for them. I do think that it's much more considered now for most retailers. Hmm. What about other companies? I mean, I think that there's a lot of uh, companies that probably still don't understand the power of social media if, in fact, they don't operate in, in a way that truly benefits their, their employees, but also the consumers that they're trying to attract. I, I think that um, companies like Nordstrom's and even Neiman Marcus, um, Saks as well, they're paying more and more attention to it. When they develop their internal communication strategy, they're also considering their employees um, on social media as well. And I think you have to. I know when we develop internal and external communications plans for our clients, we're considering the employees. We're considering how it's going to affect them from a social media standpoint because it's an extension of everything um, that happens from a business standpoint. Mm -hmm. You have to think about it. Um, I feel in Sirius's case, it perhaps wasn't the case. Well, what are some of the rules of the game, though, when you say when you develop uh, internal and external communication for, for various clients of yeah. yours and what they have to consider? I mean, there's so many nuances to social media. There's someone who could do something that you could never have possibly imagined or interpreted that's going to affect the brand. So what, um, wh what are some rules of the game, though, to, s to, to help a company make sure that they don't fall into... Um, a social media frenzy that they don't want. Well, some and, and serious aside, this is a <laughs> totally different case. Well, some of what we actually look at is who are the internal influencers within a company that actually have a significant social media following mm. that also um, the employees tend to follow. And so engage them first. You know, that's a big rule of thumb. So it gives us the opportunity to actually um, create that groundswell of enthusiasm and positivity when you're actually developing an internal communications plan. Hmm. You just normally would never think of that, right? Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't necessarily go to your own employees. You're hiring an outside uh, company no. to help with the PR and well, the outside and the company you're you. hiring to actually <laughs> give you the accounts all to right. um, to look at your internal influencers, and yeah. you might not even realize who they are. But we help determine um, who those folks happen to be. Well, what else can companies be doing to really better strategize? I think also really pay attention to uh, what's being said on social media. I think a lot of companies st start to delete negative comments. You shouldn't delete ne negative comments, but you should respond to them and you should actually have um, an approach, a cr crisis management approach in case that comes up. I think in the case of Sears, again, it did not come up. 
Um, I, I don't believe they had a crisis management plan because they didn't think that they needed to plan for that. Mm -hmm. And I think you should always have a plan for that because you have to consider it's a possibility. Not everybody will be happy with change or transition. So yeah. you, you know, when you evolve, sometimes you create an ev revolution instead of an evolution, mm -hmm. right? So you do need to um, consider all aspects of what could possibly go wrong. What kind of people are being hired to do this internally at firms? What, what, do, what do they have as backgrounds? Or what should they have? That's a great question. Um, I think an agency background is so smart because at an agency we work with so many different brands, so many different types of companies, so we're prepared for it all. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel that um, sometimes when you work for a company and you're internal, maybe you don't have that background. And sometimes you do, mm -hmm. I don't know. But I feel like having that agency expertise is always so helpful because we work with so many different types of personalities and so many different types of uh, products and companies. Well, I was going to say, I, I almost wonder if psychology wouldn't be most helpful. <laughs> totally. Because you just yeah. don't know how the people and the personalities are going to play out. Well, you have to consider it. Yeah. Because right? when you're dealing with people, it's, it's not so black and white. And you no. do have to consider all the possibilities. Right. Um, so important. It's all gray. That's what you learn as you get older, right? Completely. It's not just black and white. It's gray. Completely. <laughs> uh, great to be with you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Appreciate it.